All right, little easy. What's happening, man? What's happening? Man, you know, just uh, excited to sit down and talk to you. It's been a while. Oh, it's a pleasure, brother. It's a pleasure. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate you being patient today, man. So, but I'm glad we could sit here and get a get a productive interview going. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Well, I thought we start off. You know, this is uh, first time working together, so I just thought we would start off just getting to know you. You yeah, know, going out for you and everything, and you know what it was like for you. Oh man, growing up. Growing up was 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 beautiful at a point in time. You know, everybody knows my story. You know what I mean? So growing up was 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 it was lovely. I grew up and my parent my grandparents raised me, which is my father's parents. And um up until his passing, you know what I mean, uh it life was life, you feel I mean in Compton, California, crazy to say. A lot of people say how it was growing up in Compton, California with him without your dad. I say, Well, we're with him. It was like we was growing up in Beverly Hills, you know what I mean? It was it was beautiful. He was the king of Compton, so you feel what I'm saying? It was not a worry when people think of it like, you know, why 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 would you guys still be in Compton? It's like we were the king. It was like our home, you know, our our our, our castle, you know what I mean, our our territory. So him being the king, his grandparent, his his mother and par uh, father, which is my grandparents, you know, what I mean, uh, just had the luxury of just, you know, being free in the city. So it was good as a kid. It was beautiful. And then, of course, you know, his passing kind of turned to, you know, a bad switch in my life. You feel I mean, of course, with anybody, any kid, you know, you don't wish that on upon, upon anybody. But it's it's kind of the norm in Compton, California. You know, if your father's not dead, you know, he's either in jail, you know, or not present. You know, what I mean, we kind of live with the statistic. And it's funny. And I say this because I didn't have a father who was not present. You feel what I'm saying? I didn't, I, you know, I didn't have a father who died to gang violence or went to jail. But I sense to relate to every other kid that was in Compton, California, because we all grew up without our father. You feel what I mean? And mine's significantly the way it happened. You know what I mean? Sadly, it's just that. So most of the kids at that age, you turn to the streets. You know what I mean? You you, you turn to gang banging, of course, being in Compton, California, and then you're living with a lot of anger you angry anger with me um so from that point on from 11 years old because my father died when i was 10 april 7th april 23rd i turned 11. we buried him april 7th he died march 26th we buried him april 7th april 23rd i turned 11. so from that point on i kind of let people know that that's when i kind of went to the to street life you know what i mean um kind of following his footsteps you hear about him hustling you know what I mean? You already know his reputation in the streets. So me, I just became a knucklehead and I had a lot of anger. It wasn't, you know what I mean? So started gangbanging, you know what I mean? So life at that time was kind of tough. You know, you get to, to high school and before high school, you kind of live that life to where you kind of want to stay out of the shadow of knowing your easy son because it still hurts. You know what I mean? And then, you know, probably around the high school time, you get a little, you know, more older, you, you start to respect and, and want to in, embrace what you come from and embrace the individual that birthed you. So then that, from that point on, I say around 15, 16, it was like, you know, I, I owned up to wanting to live in, you know, you know, in his in his legacy and his light. You feel what I'm saying? And, and that was just my life. And from that point on, it was kind of verged to want to keep his, his uh, reputation where it's supposed to be in his hip hop music game. So at 18 years old is when I picked up a mic. OK. Yeah. yeah oh, OK. Yeah. Um. You mentioned that your dad had a lot of love in Compton. Uh huh. I've heard that before. Yes. Sir. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Maybe some stories. Oh or, man. Uh, you know. Ah man, just <laughs> let's, let's tell you. Let's tell you a street story. You know. Well, okay. So when people think about it like love. You know. You know how he had a lot of love. You know before Easy E. Let's just say my dad was probably one of the individuals who showed a lot of people how how to how to how to. Be in the streets getting money. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Everybody okay. knows it's so dope. So if I taught you how to weigh up a ground or something like that in that instance, and you made a whole living for it, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, you kind of look at that respect of like, wow, he was the first to kind of get us to start making some money. Bad thing as it is, you know what I mean? But it is what it is, you know? We're not going to shy away from the fact he was a dope dealer. You feel what I'm saying? He, he did what he can to sit here and make ha means happen to... To, to transition and change that when he had a kid with the money and, and get into the music business, you feel what I'm saying? So that love came from just all respect, you know, who he was, what he did before music, you feel what I'm saying? And the music, is he's the first individual to put Compton on the map, you know, give insight to the things that was going on wrong in our city with the, you know, the law enforcement, you know, what was going on in our city with drugs, violence, dope, you know what I mean? Um, 
in any in, in necessity. The thing about it is, you know, you really look back at, at Pop's music and it wasn't too much, you know, the rah, rah, rah individuals like, wanna, I just want to kill this person, kill this person. It's more so it's about, hey, how we going to get it going and how we have these problems with the law enforcement, the police. So fuck them. You feel what I'm saying? They're doing this wrong. So in the transition of, of the street life, having respect and knowing where he's from and, and really nobody can mess with him, such, such a little guy and he had respect, you go to the fact of when you now you transition into the music business and now you have some people who he changed their lives. You know what I mean? He looked out for them and you got stories to where an individual will go to jail to the federal prison behind selling dope. The only way they weren't able to confiscate his house and some of his assets is because of the fact of he legally purchased this by the help of my father. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? So my father giving him a job or, you know what I mean? Maybe, a, you know, work he did. I don't know, you might have did something for me on the music side. So gratitudely, he's gonna sit here and pay you from his company, you know what I mean? So this individual went to jail and was able to keep a lot of his assets because why he was able to prove that he got it off of hard, you know, real work. It helped a lot of people. Very much, very much, bro. You know what I mean? I tell you stories, you know, but you know the DOC, you know what I mean? You know cocaine from above the law. Above the law. You feel me? Code 187, you know, and, uh, cocaine, um, just helping out with just things of your Didn't children. Didn't he help uh, cocaine with... Uh... His children, surgeries he had to do, you know, complications he had with his children, you know what I mean? Um you know, in, in some sense, saving their lives with, you know what I mean, and paying for that. Pay for DOCs, you know, vocal treatment as the best that he can to have the voice that he does have at least today. You feel what I mean? Um, but, you know, if it, if it was just small things that you could think of, of taking care of his, 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 his circle, his people, his group, even the ones outside, you know, on the streets, you know what I mean? If it was a homeless, if it was individuals. So you kind of sit here and think about it like, wow, so even being easy e and, being a multimillionaire, you know what I mean? You guys still were in Compton. I'm mean, when I'm telling you, you have respect like a like a real godfather, you know what I mean? I was the respect and, 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 and safety and security we had, you know, being in our own city. It's a lot better than, you know, going to Beverly Hills and we've got to worry about somebody want to come and rob us. Motherfucker ain't gonna come to Compton and mess with us, you feel what I'm saying? So Compton was our Beverly Hills. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what it was like, what, what your memories of him were like? Oh man, my memories of my father range, you know, all the way, man. Uh, give you something off the top, you know what I mean? Usually it's always that soft spot that kind of gets to you, you know what I mean? Speaking of it, but my father was a father. So memories is just, you know, being there for his kids, no matter how busy he got, you know what I mean? No matter how much he had to do or, you know what I mean? The, the credibility of the individual he was in his music game and reputation, he made time for his children, you know what I mean? And not only his children is, you gotta just think about it. A lot of people don't understand. It's like, how did Easy get to the White House? You feel what I'm saying? It's because of the fact that he donated and did so much for charities and children itself. You feel what I'm saying? So they picked his name out of himself because he was a, a you know, I mean, a, a big contrib a contributor to a lot of, you know, um, non, you know, pro nonprofit organizations that were for children or helping children, and they pulled his name. So happened to be it. It's Easy. You know, I mean, like, oh wow, this man's really, you know, giving back. Yeah, he did. You know, it's a fact. You know what I mean? Y'all probably didn't want to pull this name and have this individual come and have a luncheon at the White House for all these Republicans. But it happened to be so be it because of the fact of his heart. You know what I mean? So when I say he was just like he loved, he was a good person, period. And he loved his kids. He loved kids all around. You feel what I mean? We used to go to Disneyland. We didn't just take us, you know what I mean? He took us. He took his employees' kids, you feel what I'm saying? He took his artist kids, you know what I mean? And we all went as a whole, you know? So when we walked through, you know, Disneyland, we are the traction in Disneyland, you know what I mean? And I started to tell people, I was like, you used to trip out. We want to sit and stand in line to take a picture with Mickey Mouse, and Mickey Mouse stand in line want to take a picture with my daddy. So as a kid, that messed you up. Like, oh, wow, my daddy's special, you feel what I'm saying? We came here to, this is Disney, this is Mickey Mouse world, and Pops overtook it, you feel what I'm saying? Do you remember seeing any of the NWA members when you oh, were Oh, all the time, all the time, bro. You know, Dre stayed on the couch, stood on the floor. Cube used to walk over all the time off of Greenleaf, coming from the bus stop, come record in the backyard. So I grew up and born, I was, I didn't, was, wasn't born in the house, but I grew up in the house ever since from one years old to 19, you know what I mean? So the same house NWA started at. Ren was my big homie. He stayed around the corner on Pan Ed, so it's like seeing him was abnormal. And Yella, um, Yella's still in my life to this day, you know, I actually got a, um, uh, a big show with uh, Burner, E40, Yella, and my artist, LaToy Lane, um, 
September 11th that we're doing in, 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 in um, celebration of my father's birthday. So me, Yella's always been in my life, you feel what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, it was kind of the norm of seeing the members, you know, at a point in time. You know, grandma's cooking for them. They're over even when they became big. They'll come over, you know what I mean, kind of be there, maybe do a video in the area. So it's like, you know, basically I always seen them. It must have been a shock when you found out that he was sick. Um, you mean that you guys were so close and he was in your yeah, life and everything? Yeah, it just and as a kid, you don't understand sick, what sick sick is. You feel what I'm saying? So as a kid, you say, I'm sick. Oh, okay, he sniffles, nose, I got no socks on, running outside with no shirt on. So in an aspect of when my grandma, that was the first individual that told me that he was sick, you wouldn't think nothing in the end of the nature of it. You feel what I'm saying? Until we actually had to go to the hospital. But even going to the hospital and seeing him that, that, that first week before he passed away, he was conversating like me and you, you know what I mean? Just, you know, normal. Like, oh, I have a bronchitis cough, you know, bronchitis cough. And, you know what I mean? Some little, you know, fluid in my lungs. And, you know, he's on bed, but he's eating McDonald's. He's chilling. He's cracking jokes. You feel what I'm saying? So it's normal. And then the the seriousness got into it when it was my, you know, maybe third visit when we had to go up there early in the morning because he was going to have um, a procedure done to clear the leakage of his lungs. And from that point on was the last time he could talk. Yeah. It must have been tough. Very, very, very life changing, tough, life changing, hurt. Yeah. At that that age, man, that's just you know, ten years old is a real yeah, yeah critical time for a kid, man. Very, very much, very much. You don't understand nothing, and then you know you gotta think like a, less than a week later, he's, you know he's gone. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, yeah, it was different. Um, at that time, I was the only child there. I, I'm the oldest, so when he went through the procedure, I was the only one there. Remembering at the time, as we're speaking of it, my grand my grandmother. My grandfather, um, his sister, Monty Trish, my uncle Kenny, his oldest brother, and my uncle Donald, you know what I mean? Uh, we were all pretty much there. And uh, as I'm thinking about it, kind of remember, you know, you used to think that he's buried inside your head, but remember, you know, the doctors walking in and then pumping on his chest and then walking me away until I could go back into the room. And from that point on, it was just like no, no communication. He's just looking at you or crying, you know what I mean? And I'm crying and he can't talk, but he wants to talk. Like, you know, he has tubes in his mouth, so. As a kid, you just, it was, it was a nightmare because you feel like they were resisting you from saying something, you know, resisting you from getting up. And, and you know, I mean, like, uh, I just never understood it. So when you kick, think back to the question earlier is the life growing up, that's when kind of you would think like uh, the negative and evil came in my life because I just was hurt. I, I had no understanding to it. So it was gang banging, you know, what I mean, like fuck any and everything that, that, that makes me mad and. I'm going to be mad that quick because I, I don't know how to deal with the pain that I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? Like, my daddy's just gone. You know, I don't understand this. Nobody can explain it to me. You know, I don't know what AIDS is. I don't know what HIV is. And I know Magic Johnson's still living. So all the stuff that you're seeing from the media and being told what's what, what's this, what's that. It's like, well, why this man's still living and mine's not? You know, my daddy got just as much as money as a basketball player or not. He, he was making $10 million a month. You know what I mean? So... I didn't understand it, that. it affected you in like a way that made you kind of angry and everything very much very much very much anger pain you know what i mean and being in kind of california is only so much you're going to sit here and turn to go do you know what i mean now you're thinking about a kid who you know my, my grandmother loves me to death you know what i mean she did the best that she can and she did an amazing job raising me you feel what i'm saying i probably would have been on the off roll if it wasn't for her in my life you feel what i mean but uh even as we get older now i i, I hear stories of her how i stressed her out because i'm not coming home until the, you know what I mean, street lights is on and all that and the other. So you didn't really take a hold of it when you were a kid. And as you get older and I have kids, they're like, wow, I put my grandma through a lot. Because why? She lost her baby boy and I'm the only grandchild she's raised. You feel what I'm saying? So in a sense, she's always lived that life like, it's Eric. My name's Eric. You know what I'm saying? It's Eric again. It's Eric again. So she worried. And you know, my grandfather told me that before he passed one time. And this is, you just dawn on it. Sometimes I just look at her and tell her I love her. Because, you know, I mean, I didn't imagine what you were going through. It's your youngest child, you know, and then you have to raise his son. So just imagine a life revolving that you had to go through. Maybe it was pain for you as well, too. You know what I mean? But no, I, I definitely turned to the streets. And you went and followed the individuals that were my friends, my, my dad's friends and their sons. So we all have like a similar story, you know, if their father didn't get killed or He's in jail, we're running around, and we're just living the stories of what our daddies were. So, yeah, you turn to the streets and gangbang. You guys grew up in the same house, though. Very Is that much, right? Very exact same house. So you guys really have a really similar 
life story. Very much, bro. Yeah, very much. Yeah. I didn't sell as much. I didn't. I wasn't as successful in the dope game as my father, <laughs> but you know, I walk. I, I walk those those paths. Um, and you know, as his friends, as I did a lot of unnecessary, I didn't have to do. But again, like I told you, that comes from pain. My dad had a respect to where he wasn't even, you know, wasn't no need for him to to me to lift a finger. You feel what I'm saying? Me, I figured like I was going to go prove that I'm going to lift ten fingers, and just be, you know, just be me, trying to live, a, trying to live on the edge. You know what I mean? So, but basically, yes, yeah, the same exact life, same room, same house, same parents, <laughs> and everything, same attitude, same things I do, eat the same. Do certain things the same, you know what I mean? Like, you don't notice until he's like, you, I grew up with the woman that raised him and birthed him. So when she's telling you, like, oh, your daddy used to do that, like, wow. Oh, your daddy did that. Whoa. You know what I mean? Oh, it makes sense. Wow. That's pretty, that's cool. That's dope. Yeah, that's real cool. talk, brother. Yeah, real talk. What was high school like for you? Uh, high school, like I say, uh, in the beginning of high school, you kind of run away from the pain. So... I went through high school the first year or two, and I didn't want nobody to know who I was. I didn't want you to know who my daddy was. I didn't even want that attention. You know what I mean? And so it's like crazy because, you know, I think about it now with my, my kids. And we're, we're going to, like, the mall, or I'm shopping with her, and she might see me stop, take pictures, pictures. Ah, <sighs> dad. And, I, and, and at a point in time, like, wow, you know what? I didn't trip off. I was just like that. Like, I didn't want people to know at all, you know? He used to do roll calls, like, Eric Wright, easy E, huh? Like, got the same, he's like, huh? And I'd be shocked, like, huh? And my coach would be like, you got the same name as EZ. You ever thought about that? I was like, and I seriously, literally did that. You know what I'm saying? Literally. Really? He, he, he eventually found out who I was, you know, because I left the school. And then I did a, a double XL article with Daz Dillinger. So when I was 16 years old, and, uh, and that's when double XL first came out. So, But I was gone this time and transferred to my home school, which everybody I grew up with. So they all know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, it's E. But my first school was in Long Beach. And then, you know what I mean? It just, I just kind of stayed away from that, you know? And then you go through that transition where you want to embrace what you come from. You want to, you're hearing all this music and you hear all this respect to Tupac and Biggie and this, that, and the other in my time, in my era. And it's like, ah, well, my daddy was the first one really to, it cracking you know what i'm saying my daddy was it and then as a son you just feel like you you take on your your duty to to represent what you are and what you name you kind of you embrace it the, the proper way you know what i mean and then and not embracing it again like i just tell you was just pain you know what i mean i don't want you to talk about you know what this was i don't want to talk about it you know what i mean but every kid goes through that you know you don't want to bring that up you know what i mean it just hurt like oh well, how do you feel this or why are you in Compton and why this and why are you guys don't live in like a, a mansion and this, that, and the other? All retarded, stupid questions you could get as a kid. You know, you just don't want to sit on it. You know, I mean, one girl asked me, did I have AIDS before she wanted to take my virginity? So it's a lot of stuff that was just like a person would imagine that I went through. So hiding away from it was a norm until I embraced it. Like, you know, fuck this. This is what I, this is, you know, I miss them. You know what I mean? This is who I am. I'm getting told I look like them a lot more. You act like them, you know what I mean? You're running around doing the same thing with them, you know what I mean? So at this point in time, you're kind of going, drawing into that, you know, my mold. Like, this is me, you know? What did you do after high school? Oh, man. Um, two days after I graduated, I moved to sell dope in Las Vegas. So continues that life. And then that's when I, I had a studio. I built a studio off of it. <laughs> um, I had a record store. And one night, I was just in the, in the studio. I had artists at the time that we were that the company was thinking of doing, and not me solely hands on with it. And um, they were like, "Hey, eat, get in the get in the booth and, and see what you could do." So I used to just go and remake my daddy's song. So you know what I mean? Like instead of saying his verses, I switch it, which is not hard because it's Eric is Eric. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So other than, other than that, you just switch it to different stuff. You say different words, a new generation of where we at, where our hood is at. And that was the first thing, an individual, I mean, person was like, whoa. So from that point on, I just started doing music. Were you still on the streets at this time? Uh, nah, man, I, was, I, I went from a, a, from a dope spot to a condo, to a bigger condo, to a house. So I was living in Las Vegas, you know, driving my grandma crazy. Three days after graduating, I'm gone, you know what I'm saying? Like, where are you going? I'm going to Las Vegas, you know what I mean? And, and then my homies in Las Vegas who were older than me, that had me out there, and not to say they had me on a bad path, it's just a path that I decided to pick up on. You know what I mean? I can't look around and see you guys selling birds and all that and don't feel like I want to do something and sell something this big and make that much money. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does this shit do? You feel what I'm saying? So having having understanding of it when I was younger in Compton, it's just now going in Vegas, it's like on a big scale. You know what I'm saying? So 
Nah, I was I was living. You know, they got raided. You know, all 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 good slash bad things come to an end. You feel what I'm saying? So we we got in trouble, and um, I, I went back to Compton, um, right back on on the block. We call it the Ave, where I'm born and raised. And then just kind of pursued a record deal from that point on. I was like, hey, I'm kind of done with this. This shit was kind of scary. Them federal police police coming and having cameras and, and microphones all inside your stuff. And we were here talking about a lot of stuff like that. And, they, and the whole time they was listening to us. Like, yeah, my homeboys did about 10 years a piece. You know what I mean? And I skipped town and never even wanted to look back at Vegas. You feel what I'm saying? And kind of just lived my life in Compton and got a deal maybe about a, less than a year later. So you got a deal early. Yeah, very much. 20 years old, yeah. Now, now that you got this deal, uh -huh. and you're working harder on music, I, did you ever have a regular job? No, nah, I didn't get a regular job until my second child. My first job was at uh, Ruthless Records at my father's company with my stepmother. So that was after I'd had two record deals. So I was about 25, 26 years old. <laughs> oh, okay. What was that like? You worked at Ruthless. Yeah, it was beautiful, bro. I thought at that time, I'm like, you know, I was a young, young Jay Z, and 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 coming up, I was, I did a little rapping. I, I did some touring. I did. I went out of town, went out the country. You feel what I'm saying? Was in a lot of different articles. I, I, I played some songs on movies, put a single out that 50 Cent enjoyed and loved. You feel what I'm saying? Um, was with Jermaine Dupri, was with Barry Hangerson, and then went to work with my stepmother and was like, yeah, hey, I kind of, it was kind of, you know, like kind of kept watching I told you earlier. It kind of was like turned off, you know, music. You feel what I'm saying? I was like, mm, let me go f to a zone where I feel like I'm you know, doing something I really want to do more, you know, I'm having children and, you know, from that point on, I, I learned the business. I learned every DJ. I learned how to, you know what I'm saying? Just do databases and, 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 and uh, archiving individuals, uh, cat I mean, catalogs. I was learning about catalogs. I was learning about royalties. I was learning about a lot of things I didn't learn about before I got into the music business and which is like something that I was like, wow, cool. You know what I mean? Whoa, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about. You know, there's a lot of stuff. These people make a lot of money off of us as artists. You know what I mean? So I'm just learning it and just getting sharp with it. And then once I got to that point, I was like, all right, cool. And then got all the feathers off of me, all the individuals around that I, you know, you know, were just attached to me for my deal. And I was like, I want to do this again. You know what I mean? Now I want to do it the right way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm better. You know what I mean? And uh, from that point on, I got with DJ Yellen. I toured the world. You know what I mean? Uh, with him, and I continuously toured the world. Had my first son named Eric the Third, Eric Wright the Third. And from that point on, um, I got in a little bit of trouble before the movie came out. And the movie kind of just gave like another lifeline push to the legacy. And um, when I say I went everywhere, I went everywhere. And I say that, you know what I mean? I toured the world twice or three times and back. It was for kids that were under the age of 20 years old. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was beautiful. It was a blessing. You know what I mean? So, you know, that was that. But that was my first job, man. And it taught me a lot. You know, I appreciate my stepmother giving me that job. I learned taxes. I learned all kind of stuff I didn't know. I said, whoa, I got to pay taxes on that advance they gave me on that record deal? Like, whoa, things that I didn't know. You feel what I'm saying? And like, as a kid, you're just kind of moving fast. You know what I mean? Everybody doesn't live a, a normal, perfect life, especially me. You feel what I'm saying? So a lot of the things and guidelines, so even being a father myself, you feel what I'm saying? It's just like, there's a lot of things you have to touch up on because those are the sensitive things that kind of made detrimental changes to your life. You feel what I mean? So it's still, you know, on ice. Am I doing this the right way? Kind of learning my own way. You feel what I'm saying? Learning how to groove and go on it and, and do things that, you know, you think that a, a father. And like I said, my grandmother and grandfather did a lot. But when you have pain, you kind of hold a lot away from them. And, you know, I mean, kind of being a knucklehead and, and running off doing what you can do. And, and she did her best. And then, like I said, I got older and I understood that I put her through a lot. How did how did your grandparents take it when they realized you were kind of involved in the streets and you were kind of going the same yeah. path as your dad? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a significant conversation I had with my grandfather, and uh, he told me, my dad's dad before he passed away, that uh, he's like, uh, you were you you made your grandma worried, you know, every day she's wondering like, what did he go to Vegas for? What is he doing? And this, that, and the other, and I'm like, I didn't know this. She didn't ever call me and told me this. She keeps it real with me about everything. She never told me like I was making, you know, her worry up the up the wall, you know what I mean? Or what's this, that, and the other. She had an understanding of it, you know what I mean? My grandma come from my daddy, you know what I'm saying? It's like people say, you think she ain't seen nothing before that you doing? Like, you know what I mean? This ain't the first time, you know what I mean? She knows what it is and she knows how to cope with it. And it didn't dawn on me until you get older, like, wow, you're right. 
Like, yeah, like dad was really, really doing it. You know what I mean? Having 15, 20 dudes around here doing this, doing that. You know what I mean? I'm talking about in the in the height of the 80s when the drug game was crazy as can be. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like thinking that I'm hiding something from her. Or I'm doing something. Or I got a little ounce of weed. One time I tell you a story, man. I was I was, I was was in the back room in the den and I was chilling. And I got high, fell asleep. I took my pistol out and I put my pistol on the, on the couch, on the ottoman. It's the ottoman. I put it right there. And my grandma was like, somebody's at the door for you. So I got up and I went outside. You know what I mean? And and I think I had to call my one of my cousins and he just woke up. So he came outside. We just chopping it up, chilling. And something might have happened where a person drive by and you look at it like mysteriously like, where my shit at? Let me sure. Let me hold on. Let me be right back. Go in the house. When in the house is gone. I'm like, whoa. So I go to the front of my cousin. Say, you got the thing on you? You know, he's like, no, you had it. I'm like, damn. Like, where you got it? I said, I put it on an ottoman in the couch. He's like, damn, you didn't get it? Like, no, it's not there? No. I got little cousins there at the time, you know what I mean? They're little, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, fuck. Go, I look under the couch, I'm picking it up, I'm doing everything. I'm saying, fuck. Dad, this time I gotta ask her. I'm like, fuck it, I just might as well ask grandma. I said, mama, and you know me as a young teenager, I'm thinking I'm keeping a gun away from her and I'm hiding it. Don't let her know I got one, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you, that's just right mind. You don't want your grandma to know that she ain't gotta worry about nothing, but I'm gonna keep myself strapped, you know, protected. So we live in the Compton, standing outside, chilling. You know, that's how I was. Per person pull up that's not supposed to be in that area. You want to be ready. Man, I got the courage and say, man, I just got to forget it, bro. Like, we can't even stand out here like this. I said, Grandma. She's like, yeah. I said, did you see something in the back? She said, go look in the laundry in, 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 in the dirty clothes hamper. I went in there, bro. My gun was broken down, bro, with the bullet to the side, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? My, 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 I was a Ruger, P89 Ruger. Nigga, the, 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 the clip was out, laid over here, and a bullet would sit here, put on the counter, and a gun would sit there, jacked off, you know what I'm saying, to, to clean it out. I said, oh. she said, Eric, you know you can't leave that on the couches out here. You got your little cousins around here. Be careful when you leave stuff like that. I'm like, all right, my bad, Grandma. Went outside, like, nigga, she had it broke down in a, in a dirty clothes hamper. Like, fucked my mind up. Like, you know what I mean? My grandma old as could be like, how you, how you know how to do this? You know what I mean? Grandma, you know what I mean? You probably just, blah, 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 blah. you know what I'm saying? Like, how did you know? But just me thinking, like, you think this is the first time that she has witnessed anything like this or, you know, seen a, a situation like this? So it blew my mind, like, damn, you know what I mean? My grandma took my gun apart, you know what I'm saying? But didn't get mad at me, who threw me in the other. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, as a first teenager, like, Okay, I'm cool, you know what I mean? Or she used to walk in a room and see a girl. Somebody's in there. Like, why you not open the door? Is there somebody in there? Does her mama know she's here? You know, she didn't trip. She just always wanted to know if the girl's mom knew she was there. She didn't like no girl being at the house if your mama don't know you here. You know, if your mom don't know that she's real respectful, you feel what I'm saying? You know, old school, southern woman. Like, I ain't got no problem with it, but if her mom and her parents don't know she's here, you know what I mean? She cannot be here, Eric. You know what I mean? I don't want, I, I wouldn't want my daughter not telling me where she's at. You feel what I mean? I'm like, ah. But it was always cool. Your mama know you here? Yeah. Yeah, she know mama. She was cool with it. You know what I mean? Thinking, whew. You know, you think this is the first time she hasn't seen a young little teenager come in and fucking some girls or something like that? Like, no, you know. But I was the only one raised by her. Until you get older, you realize, like, the things that I took her through in, in, in full circle. You know what I'm saying? With my father. So, you know, that's that. Did they ever share any stories with you about your dad? Ah, plenty. Plenty. Yeah, plenty of stories, you know what I mean? Times that, you know, even beat up this guy, stole some speakers, uh, how he was when he was a kid. He used to make money by, my father could do a triple flip on Vert. He could stand there. He really? Made, yeah, in you know, the cartwheel, roundhouse. You know what I mean? So he used to do that at the football games because my older, my, his older brother, my uncle, played football. So even on halftime, he'll sit here and tell some of the track stars, I'll race you for money. You know what I mean? He'll put on a show. So it's like my grandpa used to tell me, like, he, it just always seemed like he was an entertainer. Like, he always wanted to do something where individuals was, like, looking or the spotlight was on him. You know what I mean? Didn't play sports, but at halftime, he's racing half the team on the track or the football field for money. You feel what I'm saying? Or not doing a little halftime show on flips. So this is my grandfather. He used, to, he used to love that, you know, that story. Like, my grandfather loved his son, man. It's, it's nothing, you know what I mean, that my daddy could do wrong with his parents. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, that's just how it was, regardless of... I don't, my grandma don't like me to tell you that story, man. We're going to tell that story in the documentary, but it's just some things that they, they close their eyes to that they know he was, he was doing, bro. And, um, you know, man, it's, it was beautiful, man. But yeah, they, there's nothing wrong my father can do. So story after story, you feel I mean? They, they definitely had, cause you know, we missed the love them. 
Yeah, man. It it really sounds like, you know, you guys were close. The family oh, was much. close. You know, your grandparents were raising you in the same place and mm -hmm. same experiences. I've heard a lot about your dad actually not passing away from AIDS. Yeah. Is there anything you can share about that? Mm -hmm. you, you hit it on the nose. We don't feel like he, as a family, we don't feel like he passed away from AIDS. It's like I tell you, you know, as a kid, you kind of think as individual has the same stature, you know what I mean? You don't think that now as far as when, how much basketball players are making in this world, but $10 million in 1995, you know, is a lot of money. You feel me? Being worth $50 million in the ni early 90s is a lot of money compared to now. It's a lot of money now, but, you know, you got players making $250 million and all that. And the other, you look at it like, oh, that's what it was? But, yeah, we're talking about in the early 90s, you feel what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, African-American man, you know, from Compton, California, owns everything. His own masters, his own label and everything. Worth this much, yeah. So when you think back then, it's like, again, you're being told in the media and everything else, he has the same thing Magic Johnson has. You know what I mean? So as a kid, you kind of be like, that can't be true. Why? Well, if he's still living, then why he came? Why my daddy get hurt, you know, you know, die that fast or this happened? So we didn't believe it. It was a lot of stories that were going on. Doctors on floors that weren't supposed to be there. Not real doctors. Individuals on a roof. Security coming here. Security coming here. So, you know what I mean? Just just knowing the stature of what he was, you feel what I'm saying? As you get older, you st as a young, you look at it confusing. As you get older, you start understanding, like, oh, there was some more deeper shit going on than, than, than the average, you know what I mean? And, and then again, when I, when I you got to think as a kid, bro, I literally, I, I was in a private school. My father kept me in a private school. My grandmother told me he wanted me to keep, keep my education high, you know what I mean? And when I got to a public school, which was the first high school I went through, my grandmother put me in a special program where I had to keep a 4.0 GPA. So in that transition of going to high school, they were like, hey, well, what? you could choose your electives. So I wanted to take physical health, you know what I mean? I wanted to find out what this disease was, you feel what I'm saying? Like that, what fucked my life up, you know what I mean? In the form of taking my father away from me, you know what I mean? So when I found out a lot of things and you get older and you, and you look at facts of what's what, there's a lot of things that I, I just didn't see that was right for them to do back then. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, surgeries and, you know, different procedures that you wouldn't think that you would do for a person that has full-blown AIDS. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, you know, just doing that. And, and, and it's, some, it's some leniency here and there to it as far as what was okay, what's not okay. But what just definitely was not clicking to me with the right way was how you die so fast. You know, I'm an AIDS activist now, you feel what I'm saying? I, I, I went from country to country, uh, did, did talks for Ghana, Belgium, um, just AIDS clinics, facilities, AIDS walk, do it every, every do it, was doing it every year, you know what I mean? All off my education that I want to find out about this disease, you know what I mean? And every single step of the way that I do, I, 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 I'm associated with individuals who run it. And these individuals who run these organizations are getting me to come out here and pay me to come talk or fly me out the country are individuals who are living with AIDS, full-blown AIDS, you know what I mean? And, and just hearing their story and, and, and catching up on, on the facts of what's what and, and what you can do and how you can live, I still didn't understand of how my father was attacked so fast from it, you know, and died from it, you know what I mean? You have individuals who children were born with it from the time was and, and now older than me. You know what I mean? So they just schooled me, educated me on things. I educated myself all the way from, what, 12, 13 years old. You know what I mean? And still to this day, I just will never believe my father died of AIDS. Well, no, nobody around him has no. it, right? I have a little sister who was born after he passed away. You know, she was born uh, September 28, 1995. And she's healthy and living. Uh, the individual carried her, my stepmother, and conceived her. He, she's healthy and living. Um, his side females, his everything else you could think of are healthy and living, you know what I mean? Even if it's one mysterious one and, you know, in time being, I'm going to at a time go sit down and talk to her, which was a, a significant individual that was a part of his life behind the scenes that everybody knew about it. She's still to this day living. So, you know, you ask yourself like, hey, you know, well, well, what the fuck happened? Or what was that the signal him out and took him out? You know what I mean? So I never believe that me myself. Have you went back and checked with the hospital and tried to look at records or anything? By that time I got to that age, it, it wasn't it wasn't a drive for me to go want to find out. You know, I just I just know, you know, what I mean, only God knows. And, 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 and I feel like, you know, what I mean, in the sense that, you know, what I mean, he's reassuring me as far as when my thought process is going is not in the wrong way. But my sisters did. You know, I never wanted to really do it. My sisters did. And again, you got forged 
um, signatures. You got doctors who can't find right now. You got, you know, death certificates that were altered. You know what I mean? You got all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, it's 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 a mystery to it. You know what I mean? And individuals just ask to me, it's like, it'll be a time I speak on it in a documentary. Uh, but as far as in just, you know, it was my sister's dreams to want to really find out. I was at that age to where me finding out is going to do what? You know what I mean? Like, oh, we do. Oh, okay. I, we knew that. We knew that. You know, like, wow. Okay, at least I cleared it up. No, I know already. You know, you know, something wrong. As big as he was, as important as he was, as much as he had, as much as he was worth. You know what I mean? It just in this crazy ass fucked up world. You know what I mean? It just you just know there was some you know conspiracy bullshit to it. You know, that's just that. You know, uh, and it's just me. Uh, I just feel like. If we know it, I try to teach my sisters, it's like, why well, dig up something that's going to be like a, a yesterday's hurt? You feel what I'm saying? Like, and that hurt right there f fucked our lives up to the sense at a young age. You feel what I'm saying? We didn't, we still have pain from it. You feel what I'm saying? It, it's still certain things that we go through. It's still habits of things that I do and don't realize that I do it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 we'll, and you know, you have some people who love you to sit here and, and, and you know, kind of, tell you about yourself and you won't realize some of that stuff to this day is the age I am now of why I do that or why it's like that. You feel what I'm saying? And then it'll break me to understand it like, damn, you know what I mean? I'm not perfect, but maybe those were like the little nicks that I, you know, I just kept and closed up and then let, you know what I mean, grow or heal the proper way. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, it could be my anger. It could be a loud lash, anything. Those are all, you know, just, just certain situations and things of the pain that I grew up with, you know, I mean, of not having my daddy and not knowing what really happened to my father. You feel what I'm saying? It was just, hey, let's deal with this. He's dead. Here, go, go on with life. You feel what I'm saying? This is what life is. Hey, continue. You know what I mean? We like them in 30, you know, almost 30 years now to where individuals are thinking about, oh, what if? Or we don't think this was right. You know what I mean? Like they don't even think about the kids. You, know, you think that shit, yeah, I give a fuck about that. Like, you know what I mean? Can it bring them back? Can I rewind and go back and ra get raised with them? You feel what I'm saying? And I, and I, I went, and then they don't understand is I'll go rewind, go back, get raised from him and be broke, not knowing who my father is, just knowing that he was a father that wants to be there for you. I would love that. Care about the money, fame, or anything like that. I just want my daddy. You know what I'm saying? So me having kids, you understand how detrimental it is not having a father figure in your life. So th at this point, you're just like, you kind of just, you know, just, you're just trying to just let it go and just kind of I move would, on. you know, I would. The only reason nah, that, uh, I give it any attention is because I see how much hurt and growth my sisters even got from it and lived and moved on from it. So me being the oldest, it's, it's like, it's a father figure supportive thing to sit here and like, if you guys feel you need that and you really want to, then I'm not gonna continuously quarrel with you guys about what we shouldn't do. And, and hey, you know what I mean? Well, what is it that you want me to do or what is it you need to find out? So. Some things in a, in a small way, I'll be helpful to the journey that they want to. But it's again, I, I, I cry and, and argue with them that it's not going to do nothing to it. We're going to do the same thing we're doing now. Cry. Cry. Because we're going to say, hey, oh, we knew it. We knew this already. We're going to cry. But what are we going to do? You want to picture out the person? You know what I'm saying? We're going to point it at them. I don't give a fuck if they gave us $100 million for that. The fuck I'm going to do? I'm, all I can do is just make sure my kid's life and everything is straight. That, that it's already going to be straight regardless if they did that or not. But what is it going to do? Oh, some money's going to make me feel good about? Or, or, or putting somebody in jail is going to make me feel good about losing my daddy? I done went through 18, 19 years, 20 years off of, you know what I mean? Hurt and pain. Ain't shit going to help me with that. But until the day that he's resurrected, I see him. And I can be with my family as all. That's how I believe and, and, and how I was raised to understand. But other than that, now I ain't going to, I mean, I wouldn't even, what you going to say? We want to kill this person? We gonna find out who this person is. We, what, what you wanna do? You wanna do something to his family? No, that ain't. That ain't. That's how I live. It's not how I was raised. You know what I mean? God, God's gonna have vengeance on whatever, whoever did it. You feel what I'm saying? The only thing Eric cares about is the fact of, you know what I mean? You, what you can't do? Rewind and have and grow up with a daddy. You feel what I'm saying? No, I can't. It ain't gonna do nothing for me. So, time being, hopefully, you know, and at time going, they can understand it. But it's, it's, it's. It's, it's obvious my sister, my youngest sister, which was one of the youngest, has a documentary that's airing now, you know, speaking on uh, the conspiracy that she feels my father went through. I'm not a part of it, you know what I mean? Uh, it was done the wrong way. It's, it's, it's going off on the wrong foot, um, and it's a lot of lies to it, you feel what I'm saying? So 
I'm not supportive of it. You know what I mean? So, and when I speak of sisters, it's, it's the one who's the oldest, which is Erica. You feel what I'm saying? Me and her have the same mom and dad. So, you know, that's somebody that I know hand in hand of what pain we went through together. You feel what I'm saying? It wasn't a kid that went off with her mama when my dad died and grew up and we grew up separately and we came together. No, he kept his core kids together. We were all raised together. But Erica and me have the same mom and dad. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, it's just the hurt that I know that she went through. You know what I mean? And, and I think the only thing is, is the blessing that God gives her kids ourselves to transition that energy into raising her kids the right way that we wouldn't want to sit here and go through again or see anybody go through. You feel what I'm saying? By having our parents in our life. You know what I mean? And, and I respect her because she's not with her her her, uh, her her first child's father but she respects and does what respectfully you're supposed to do as a mother to keep that relationship between them she never alters none of their relationship whatsoever you know what i mean if i have to if i have to bend in backwards to make sure that he's in the same area with him to be able to take care and see him that's what we do so that's the beauty and blessing from god that we came is to teach individuals and to know and raise our kids the proper way regardless of what circumstances we in man that's dope yeah it, it sounds like, you know, you're, you're, you guys were the oldest, so you guys probably remember your dad the most. Very and, much. You know, for the younger kids, I mean, you know, they probably, I don't, I don't know for a fact, but, you know, when you're really, really young. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, you're 100% right. My, my sister was really, really young. She's being influenced by a, let's just be real, a baby mama. Not somebody he had a relationship with, a baby mama. Somebody he, living his, 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 his wildlife stuck his thing in something and 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 conceived a child and like, oh wow but he's a father so what he does he takes care of all his kids regardless of which ways and how he had them you feel what i'm saying that's one thing about my father no matter what i got 16 of them out there i'm gonna take care of 16 of them i didn't mean to probably have 16 of them but hey mama here goes such and such 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 a birth certificate and all that you know that's one thing that's funny is uh when we got older we found out about other kids but my grandmother knew <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, really? she did. She, she had the birth certificates in the house for 19 years. I'm living in this house. All I had to do is pull this picture down, say, "Who is this, Mama?" Thinking it's a cousin or something. Pull out, see the birth certificate, say, "My daddy's a kid." You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, Grandma, you've been having this picture the whole time, and that's been my little brother. Like, yeah, yeah. Like he tells, he, he you know, anytime he goes, Mama, I got another one. Mama, I got one over here. You know what I mean? And and I, again, like there was only maybe one or two that we didn't see when he was alive, and then two or three that we found out about, you know, years after he passed away. How many total kids did he end 11. up having? 11. 11. Uh -huh. Okay, because I remember when he passed away, it was, it was five. Six, it was five five okay. of us, and then, and then the last one, six. Six. Yeah. Two when he two at the funeral came, and then two more. No, well, who we? Of course, so Jada was, Deja was born in September of 2095. 20, uh, so then I was seven. Then two came, two came to the funeral, and then two were found out in a mist of less than 10 years ago. Wow, that's crazy. It, it seems like now that you're older, you've kind of embraced things a little bit, you know, more. And I think you, you perform as your dad. You, you get hired to perform mm -hmm. as your dad uh -huh. sometimes? Yep, yes, most definitely. What's that like for you? Beautiful, beautiful. Like, uh, I feel like it's a just a rightful thing to, you know, to be done. It, it, people understand it gives me... A different type of energy like uh the different type of it's like it, it's i'm the you call it energy it's just it's something that kind of completes me in a, in a situation in, in a way you know what i mean um you know because i get asked a lot of times like hey you don't never get tired of performing your dad's music no you don't know what it does to me you know what i mean regardless i don't care if you you person don't ever want to hear this it just does something to me you feel what i'm saying it's just it, i think it's a process of of, of life that's supposed to go on and complete, you feel what I mean? Anytime it's played, you know, mom, and just like Moan used to say that, you know what I mean? Like anytime it's played or anytime the, the, in a situation or we perform, you know what I mean? You are him, you know, you are him in a sense. And, and I just think that on all, no little spiritual shit and nothing like that. It's just, it's just a different type of glow in my heart, my energy, you know what I mean? My body, you know what I mean? That I, I performing the things that my dad made a name off of, you know what I mean? And, you know, his accomplishments, you know what I mean? And be able to sit here and represent it and do it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful to me, bro. Ain't nothing better than that. I told people one time, I said, I go all my life perform my dad's music and not a song of mine, and I'll do it. You feel what I mean? Because it's the reason why I, got, I do this, you know what I mean? Like I told you, I went to school, I was intelligent, bro. I should have 
if it, I mean, you know, first choice, I would have been an athlete, you know what I mean? Second choice, I probably would have been a, a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, you feel what I mean? Other than that, this music shit wouldn't have been some of mine. If my daddy was normally here, what he doing, what he's supposed to do, probably would have had me running the company, if anything, you know what I mean? Doing some, you know what I'm saying, some technical work, you know what I mean? Or, you know, who knows, son, engineer, produce, but you ain't, you know, my father, how his thought process was when we were younger, when you ain't gonna, there's no fucking reason for you to do no rap, you know what I mean? Like, no, so doing this, you know what I mean? I'm gonna do it to the, you know, the best ability representing something that, that you know, he was about. It's not really for me. You know what I'm saying? It's just to keep, you know, something that, that birthed me that was here and was taken away from me. You know what I mean? So I got different business and different things that I'm doing and I, I have fun doing, you feel know I me? Mean? But, you know, when it comes to this music, it's, it's the most enjoyable re recording. I mean, filming, uh, rapping his music, performing his music. How did you feel when they started recording the movie? Mm. Uh, people look at it like, ah, oh, he was upset. He didn't play this. I didn't give a fuck. You feel what I'm saying? I got called in two or three times to audition for it. You know what I mean? I wasn't the same size as my father. It was like, you know, that, didn't, that was obvious. Could I get to the same size? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I was, you know, you get all kinds of things. I didn't have enough acting skills my father. You know what I mean? Could I have been taught that? Yeah. You know what I mean? But Eric is not a person who sit here and, 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 and or cry over spilled milk or get into a mold of, this is this, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I think the most obvious things when my sisters got mad and making a style and used girls in the hood. I love that. Do you think I could get at it? Like, oh, what? Oh, she should put us on it. She should use my sister. She said, no, the fuck I don't live. I said, I wasn't raised like that. You feel what I'm saying? Mine was, hey, they don't want to use me. They don't want to use me. Do you tend to call me or, or whoop doop? As a matter of fact, I want, I'm curious to see where they're going to film it at. My, my thing I would have been happy with is if you came over there and filmed it in the original house. You feel what I'm saying? There's certain things that you guys would originally did that some people like you would think is just is just common courtesy in your heart. But this world is fucked up. Everybody don't have a, a good thought process in their mind. Or everybody, or everybody's not the perfect individual. Everybody doesn't have a good heart and all that and the other. Everybody doesn't do things as you would think as the norm or you know what's expected. You know what I mean? I I learned that losing my daddy at a young age. This world is fucked up. And I don't expect nothing to be handed to me. I don't expect nothing to be like of normal or like, hey, Wutup, if it does it, like as you're supposed to, you give all praise to the God because that was only a godly thing. Other than that, these people in Wutup, I put my, my, my trust into a human being, I'll be fucked off. Our individuals out here, I'll be fucked off. So I wasn't raised like that to be feeling like, oh, well, it's just the proper thing to do. You feel what I'm saying? If they didn't, the only thing I would have been like, hey, film it in the original house. I don't care if you don't use me. Don't care if it would name the other. You want the best actor to be easy? Cool. I want the best look to be my father as well. You just didn't tell the best story. You feel what I'm saying? But is he here to tell his story? No. So do you expect, again, the proper protocol stuff to do? Do you expect his friends or his counterparts to tell his story better than they're going to tell their own? No. You feel what I'm saying? But I live with that truth in my life. I've been living with that truth since I was young, if it was anger at the time or not. It's just, hey, some people are just going to steer you the wrong way. I'm sorry I think like that. Some people say, hey, Eric, why do you always think negative? Maybe because if I put that out first, then therefore I won't let my anger or, or, or the norm come into play when I expected you to do this. You know what I mean? So that's just me. Did, did I care? No. Did I show up? No. I got a phone call from, from, from Cube's bodyguards, and when they thought I shot the motherfucker up or had people shoot it up, and my sister was happened to be there, and Cube and his wife was talking, and they were like, hey, you know, Eric don't got no ill will feel about this movie, or are you guys, anything like that. Nobody has called him. So when you say he, why he hasn't showed up, why they don't see nothing, why he hasn't said anything about it, fuck, I'm, what I need to say about it? The motherfucker come out, oh well. You send me the premiere, hey, I'm going to show up. Me and my family and everything, my grandma and all that. You know what I'm saying? Give, give whatever that you guys want to invite us to to be a part of, hey, we are. In my mind, I always used to think to, to when I was younger, why this motherfucker's doing this and my daddy, he ain't got no right to it. My first person that I got into it was game off of that. The game, mad because you 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 giving people a thought process, you easy son. That shit drove me crazy. But again, I I grew up to a maturity to where you know, you don't you don't rely and expecting that no human being, no man is gonna do the proper and right thing, or you know what I mean, or act the proper way. So it is what it is. You know what I mean? I didn't care about what was going on with that movie, you know, until they called me and asked me for advice onto it. So that call I got. You know, and my sister kind of got at Cube's wife and him the, the proper way to say, hey, my, my brother don't feel this way. Nobody is contacting him. So when you ask, here's his number. Y'all could call him and ask him if, if would he do this? What does, what does he feel? Or is he supportive of it? Or matter of fact, come to the set. And then I went. Out of my Instagram, went my youngest son, Eric. You know, let him sit in director's chair and play. And, 
the, you know, some of the directors and, and, and the producers held him to sleep, and I got to coach and critique the performances for uh, Jason Mitchell when he did Straight Outta Compton. I mean, we won't easy. You know what I mean? So that was cool. You know, I appreciate that. And again, like, you know, we went in support of it. Other than that, it was their story. You had mentioned that they thought you were going to shoot the set up? No, they thought that I had the shit. The shit got shot up. They thought I had it shot up. Really? Mm -hmm. Over that? Oh, wow. Over, over me not, over me being angry that. And then again, like you had, I had Shug call me. I had, they used to, what they was, they used to go film it in, in red rag neighborhoods, blood neighborhoods. So you had OG Pyrus and Bloods, like AE. You have anything to do with this? I'm like, nope. Well, they in my hood right now, you know what I mean? I can send my little homies over there and whoop them down the other. You let me know. You ain't with it, whoop them down. They ain't going to film over here. No. And they, I'm telling them now. Like, there was plenty of calls like that for me to sit here and, and hit a green light. You feel what I'm saying? Off the respect. I don't got to boast and brag about it, but it's, that's just what I got in my city and off of what I stand on. So did I care to sit here and do some negative, stupid stuff like that? I don't live a lot of life like that. Why? Going to go shoot up some innocent people or shoot up some motherfuckers doing something positive? I don't care if they was my enemies. No, don't go do that. No, I don't, I'm not even thinking about them. I'm, oh, wow, I didn't know they was over there. Glad. Okay, damn, they're not coming on our side using this house. Okay, cool. That's. I see that. But yeah, yeah. Well, let me know. Eat no problem, bro. I appreciate it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, on some <laughs> mafiosa shit. Like, you know, I got the connection to pools, but do I push that button? No, I don't need to. But it's a joy knowing that the legacy I come from and the reputation, respect my daddy got for our, with our family in this world, that is there. You feel what I'm saying? That's cool. It's cool. It's cool to know it's there, but I, mean, I don't need nobody to do nothing. Nah, you know what I mean? It got shot up. Oh, my goodness, Eric had it. You know what I mean? But come on now. No, I didn't do that. You know what I mean? And my sister had to let them know. My, my brother don't give a fuck about none of that. You know how easy it is for him to come do this himself? Yeah, the ignorant person that I was? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's how I, that's how I was. I grew up. Well, I'm going to have another nigga going to do something I can do myself. And like I told you before in the interview earlier, I was fucked up as a kid, so... It was some shit that I would do. There's some shit that I, I that, mm, yeah, some thought process that I did have, you know, until you mature and you embrace what your father was, my father was, who he is, and, and my name, you know what I mean, to carry on the proper way, you know what I mean? But, nah, I didn't give a fuck about that, 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 that set to be shooting it up like that. Nah, nah, I don't even go shoot up other niggas' set if you understand what I'm saying. So, <laughs> I didn't care about that. When I was doing my research and, you know, I was learning that, you know, I mean, I mean, I heard about it a long time before that you were considered, you know what I'm saying, for the part of your dad. You know, it, it kind of like dawned on me, like, it would be really hard for me to play my dad passing away. There you go, brother. And, and it, I, wow, great, 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 great thing you brought up. Uh, and I'm glad you touched on it because that's 110% exactly what Dr. Dre and Ice Cube told me to my face. You know, F. Gary Gray as well is the, the only problem they had was not knowing if I would have played him dying. And they weren't comfortable with asking me that, doing that. And then at that time they played him dying, it was going to be detrimental weight that I would have had to lose, even though we know you could do it. And he said it. F. Gary Gray said that, and I respect him for that. You know what I'm saying? I respect him all the way for that. You know what I mean? As, as he, and he felt it was the proper thing for me, too, but it was just things in the movie in the script that he just felt like like damn like nigga we finna and then it's like cool for him to lose weight but it's like this time that he's going through the sickness on a deathbed it's like we need you to use drastic weight you feel what i'm saying and then play this part you feel what i'm saying so i respected that and understood that all the way you feel what i'm saying and and i appreciate you even bringing that up because it's like that's exactly what was said and it dawned on did not on me to uh, bring that up is you know they're kind of right, you know what I mean? And and that was probably like the coolest, smoothest thing to make me feel like I didn't care, but I didn't care regardless, you know? You gave me an opportunity, I didn't make it. My whole thing was, you know, I need a better actor. It is what it is, you know? I didn't have the proper time uh, um, or the individuals around me to sit here and put me in the proper positions to sit here and learn from that early, but it is what it is, you know? It came down to, I respected that part. All the other stuff I could have figured it was bullshit, but that part I did understood, you know what I mean? Not playing him dying. You know, I, I wouldn't have wanted to. Yeah, I wouldn't have. You got to think. Like, I'd have fucked around and fucked the whole movie up if that was the last part you filmed. Like, yeah. I'm cool. I can't do this. Fuck this, you know. Hey, you'd have said one word in the process of him dying. I'd have walked the fuck off the set. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I'd have probably been overly tormented again because that scene made my whole entire family walk out of the screening crying. You know what I mean? So I can imagine just playing it and, uh, you know, 
and then feeling like, oh, it's okay. We did some something successful. We got it off. Nah, I couldn't. Nah, nah. It's just some shit that, you know, I mean, regardless of how people look at it, um, you know, all monumental, this, this, you know, bucket list. Nah, nah. Because why? That was the pain in my whole entire life of why I'm the way I am now. I pray of all praise to God that I was, I was, I was touched on and fixed, but I would never want nobody to grow up, you know what I mean, with the situation of your father being taken from you. Don't know. It's some niggas who know their daddy got shot, you know what I mean? And like, hey, well, at least we know this group of people over here shot him. You know how your father died. You know what's happening. As stupid as crazy it may sound, but, you know, living with a mysterious of like, what the fuck? That, that's not cool, bro. Not cool. Yeah, man. I can't imagine, man. I, yeah. I, it must be really tough. Yeah, yeah. You know. What do you think the biggest misconception about your dad in the movie was? He was broke at the end of his, his time. Gotta think he put, this give you facts, he put straight off the streets of motherfucking Compton. Went platinum by himself. You know, went platinum by himself. Bone Thugs and Harmony, we all know what what they, we all, it, it's it's nothing you can, let's rewind. Bone was killing it. Yeah, don't, don't say, don't say, oh yeah, yeah, if, no, they were successful. He did discover them. He did put them out. They are on Ruthless. They will be in a, the, the Hip Hop Hall of Fame is probably one of the next great best groups in hip hop there is. So you mean to tell me that we were looking at a decline in his lifestyle? And then as his son, which is a fact, is that the last house we went to before my father died was the biggest fucking house. You feel what I'm saying? So where in life was there a decline? We moved from a small house in Woodland Hills into a big house in fucking Calabasas before he passed away. You feel what I'm saying? I'm getting lost in the moment. We playing hide and seek in that moment. It's, I don't want to even go in his office because it's, it's downstairs all the way around with a Chucky doll in there and it's, it's dark and it's big in there. So as his kid, as his child, as his family, that was false. You feel what I'm saying? He did not roll around. Now, no, no, no disrespect due to Dr. Dre whatsoever, but he did not go into a sad zone you feel what I'm saying? Our messed up zone because Dr. Dre left. You feel what I'm saying? No, look at he kept it cracking. You know, he kept it going and he was getting paid off of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was the biggest concept my dad always talked about? Money. I ready to deal with the money than a motherfucking name. Give me a pen and then rap. But all that other bullshit without money ain't jack. You feel what I'm saying? Think about how, he, how his attitude was. It wasn't about that. The biggest hurt was the individuals that probably took money from him. You feel what I'm saying? Individuals who probably were doing him sideways behind his back. Had nothing to do with as far as all the shit that they crying and shit. My daddy wasn't crying and no shit. He that nigga was psychotic, <laughs> crying. I don't even. The only thing I probably seen him cry is his big cousin funeral, which is my older cousin. His big cousin was my second cousin. Other than that, nah. My father wasn't didn't have no soft heart like that, or was broke. Yeah, I remember when I seen it. I was it was kind of like I was kind of like why why were they even. Yeah, he moved to a different house, degraded, and I'm telling you, it's for a fact, God to honest truth, God to honest truth, not on my mama, not on my daddy, not on the God to honest truth, is it was the biggest house we were in. If anything, you guys were upgrading. All the way, bro. Instead come of on. downgrading. Come on, bro. It was the biggest house, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. At one point, Suge shows up. Yeah. To the set of the movie, and... Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we all know the story, story about yep. what happened. Uh-huh. And, you know, I guess he wanted to get paid... For his part in the movie, but very much. I've I've been told that you don't really have to pay somebody. Oh if no, you're no 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 no. Telling no. your side of the story. No um. Okay, let me touch upon that. When I I told you in the beginning when they were filming the movie, I got calls and I told you one of the calls are from Shook, so I got a call from Shook calling one of my older homeboys and wanted to get in contact with me. So you know his story was the fact of he was going to go and demand some type of money from him for his role. The problem is, is, you know what I mean? And, and so, you know, it's nothing, no shot or fire at him doing the shug, but let's just be common sense. You can't conduct business like we did back in the 90s. You can't sit here and think that I'm gonna grab somebody and put them over a ledge and, 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 and like Big Red and, 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 a, and, a, and a five heartbeats and, you know what I'm saying? My office hours is from nine to five, you know what I mean? You can't, it's no getting down like that, you know what I mean? In this era, period, point blank. That shit stopped when he when when all the killings was going on after my father in 96 97 between Tupac and Biggie so that way of conducting business was just absolutely extinct you killed half of hip hop doing business like that you feel what i'm saying like so 
he was going about it the wrong way. Now, back to what you asked me is when I did go on set and I had a conversation with Cube, you know, Cube said it too. I said, and I asked Cube, you know, I, I know you, you, y'all finna get a lot of problems from Suge. You feel what I'm saying? And like, if this is what you feel like, you you want a favor from me or you want to, we gonna scratch each other back. I know y'all got money, but a lot of y'all so scared of him. Do you want me? And I'm not saying him as far as the Cube itself is per se scared of him, but this industry. You know, Cube ain't nowhere near scared of him, but this industry. Scared of him. You know what I mean? Do you want me to have a conversation, bro? He said, nah, 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 nah. He's like, he just going about it the wrong way because when it comes down to it, we have to pay him. Mm. We got to pay him. You know, in some form or fashion, we have to pay him with the things that we're, we're portraying and using in his likeness. You know, we, it got it, it has to be a conversation to get him something. He, of course, they knew he's just going about it the right way. And he, hey, should you just let an angry dog go and sit here and roam around in, 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 a, in, a, in a yard with no leash? You open that door, you know what that dog going to do. You know what I mean? It's his, it's, his, it's his habit. So what they do, they just let his habit go into a form of what he's normally going to do. What's his normal ability of doing? Checking, threatening, feeling like he's finna go about this. Matter of fact, fuck it. Get to the point, I'm gonna pop up. And pop up, you know what I'm saying? Like, sad to say, you know what I mean? And God bless his soul, Terry Terry Carter was my, one of my friends as well. You know what I mean? That was my partner as well. That was my, I, I say he's my OG. You feel what I'm saying? He's a red rag, been where I dealt with the red wood He's my OG. You know what I'm saying? It's when I, you got love in common, you got love. I love all my city. Red or blue, brown or black. You know, even the white ones that's in it. You know what I mean? I love my city. You feel what I'm saying? I love people. You feel what I mean? So that was my homeboy, period, point blank, for the individuals that don't know street code. Regardless of what he was, it's my homeboy. And I was Shook's friend. And I could tell you Shook didn't mean to do that to his friend. You know what I mean? So shit happens. You know what I mean? A lot of shit happens when we go about doing things the wrong way. Fuck. Ah, well, you, sh you shouldn't have brought that. You shouldn't have did it. I didn't mean to shoot him. I didn't mean to do this. All kind of shit happens when we go on things with the negative wrong way. So... Nature just took his course of him getting down and doing business the wrong way and it cost somebody their life and it cost him his freedom. You know what I mean? It's just, it's sad to say, you know what I mean? I wish, wish death upon anybody and I definitely don't wish jail upon a, not a soul. That ain't the place to be, brother. That ain't the place to be. You're a slave, boy. you just a, you, 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 modern day slavery. For the wrongdoing you did, but it's modern day slavery. Yeah, I hear you, man. That was a uh, yeah. It was a sad situation, man. It was yeah, and, and and more highly because of the fact of an individual lost their life. You know what I mean? That was his friend. Again, it was a mistake doing some shit that you we shouldn't have you shouldn't have been going to do. You know what I mean? Handle it the right way. You know, it's lawyers nowadays. You know, I mean, it's been lawyers. You know, it's lawsuits. It's you know what I'm saying. It's paperwork to get signed, handled real easily, real aspectively to where you gonna get nice. And they're they going to transition that money so I don't got to go pick it up from you. They're going to transition that money straight to me somehow. They're going to have somebody else. And then I'm going to pay a percentage to sit here and go hand it hand to hand. You know what I mean? They ain't got to do business like that in these ways. It wasn't no street job. It wasn't no dope. It wasn't no, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that sack. It wasn't that, it's, you know, something you fronted him. It's business. Handle that the right way. They got lawyers for that. You might as well go to school for that. Make livings for that. Billionaires for that. Real shit. Yeah. You had mentioned talking to Suge uh -huh. during the movie. Was yes. that your first time talking to him? No, 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 no. That wasn't my first time talking to Suge. Suge actually reached out to me about some other situation of things he wanted to talk about, about the past, and uh, and kind of clear the air on some other things. You know, uh, people probably familiar with his whole Jimmy Kimmel comment. So uh, on, a, on a real level, that's when, you know, he was reaching out to me for. Did he touch on it or did he say uh, that just yeah kind of in a, in a light way you know what i mean he he had you know him and my father they had to do the agreement for dre you know they always had to talk because they had to do the agreement they had to do business to sit here to understand that you know my father still had a contract on dre so how you know they were still conversing with each other beforehand because everybody knows suge used to work for ruthless before he started death row you know he's a bodyguard for the company and uh, his assignment or taking care of was DOC. So, you know, Suge, Suge was familiar with the, with the surrounding before Death Row's pop time. Did he apologize to you or? Um, if you want to take it as that, you know what I mean? Uh, it's nothing I was looking for. It's just, you know, somebody got something to say and especially this man with, uh, you know, stuff on my father and especially in the past, who wouldn't want to listen, you know what I'm saying? So 
I'm not scared of him. I mean, like I and I'm, I don't feel he's scared of me. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna say two hands on real niggas. So why not go sit down with him? For the people who don't and not comment to understand and you know my attitude about it, why not? Um, yeah, I'm gonna sit down with you. Let me hear what you gotta say. When did he make the comment? Was it your dad wasn't sick that publicly that long or or anything, right? What? Um, I want to say you know, and to tell you the truth, I'm not familiar with because I did I get sent to me. I'm familiar with what it is. Do I really give a fuck? No. You know what I'm saying? What he said? Mm -hmm. You know, truth to what he said? Don't feel like he doesn't have that much power. Um, probably, you know, doing what, you know, the mistake a lot of people do is having a potty mouth to putting the fact out that it is some conspiracy to it, which is what I got from it. You feel what I'm saying? So, what year was it that he did it? I, I I really didn't give a fuck and don't know and don't follow that shit like that. I like Jimmy Kimmel, don't get me wrong. I just didn't follow that that time on you, so. Yeah, because we didn't learn about it. I, until, didn't, I didn't know about it until it hit the internet. Until it hit the internet, exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, it must have been a time I didn't catch Jimmy and I sure wouldn't catch Jimmy Kimmel that night. But I'm a big fan of Jimmy Kimmel, so I just, I wouldn't know no information of that. What happened when your dad and Suge actually met? Um, you talking back, about the back, movie, the movie the, situation? The part of the movie. Nothing. Trying to get him and 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 I mean, uh, intimidate him to sign over Dre, and my father kept signing, you know, a wrong name. So that's that's about it. You feel I me? Mean? Got a, got a, some information um, that he supposedly he was going to come to Compton of where his mother or where we were living at the house I'm telling you about, and of course, like I told you, that's not true either. You know what I mean? So ain't shit happen. Ain't shit ever happen. So. It's, you know, it's Hollywood. It was Hollywood scene. But he did meet up with Suge that night to, to, to speak on business with Dre. And then was was intimidated. Beat up, like, in that nature, no. Beat up, no. Period, no. So that's about it. It was threats. That was about it. A lot of threats. I mean, I, I would think uh -huh. I was seeing somewhere there was guns pulled out or... Oh, it probably was, you know. probably was pulled out, but he stood in sign what they wanted him to sign, and then the next threat was that you had somebody at his, his mother house, which wasn't true either. And how I know that significantly is because the bodyguard showed up that night without my father, so you knew something was wrong, you feel what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, okay. You know, I, I seen somewhere that uh, you performed at Coachella. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, for my birthday. That was my birthday, yeah. What was that? How did you learn you were performing? Ah, uh, it's crazy. Um, well, I just got out of jail. Um, the previous year before Trinidad out of Comedy came. So full circle coming back down to next April. Um, I just get a call from Playboy T, which is Tyrone, um, me and Yellow's role manager, Yellow's um, cousin. And he was like, hey, you know, um, Yellow wants you guys to come to this, this rehearsal thing. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool, who's rehearsing? I'm like, oh, NWA, I guess they're supposed to be doing something at Coachella. I'm like, I mean, well, uh, he's supposed to be rehearsing with someone with Cube, you know, because he was doing a lot of spot dates with Cube, him and Ren. So when I get there, me and Dub is chopping it up, and Dub happened to sit there and say out of his mouth, like, man, I'm glad, you know, they're doing the right thing. You know, Dub, Dub C is my, is my OG, you know what I mean? It's like my big brother for real, you know, solid, real, real solid. That's family, you feel what I'm saying, all the way. So outside OG, that's my family, bro. And he says, I'm glad, you know, they they, they doing right. So I didn't understand what Dub was saying at the time. And all we know is uh, I see representatives for game, and I see a big truck pull up and out come. We thought it was Kendrick. And I'm like, whoa, Kendrick's supposed to be here? What's going on? It was Dre. So Dre comes out, uh, the whole group, Q, Ren, Dre, and Yella go inside the rehearsal. So he like, you know, I got my phone. You know what I mean? I'm like, whoa. So he's like, uh, everybody can put their phone out. We'll do it in the other. We were like, I'm like, ooh, what they finna do? I was just finna take a picture of him. So I'm like, oh, with me. I'm like, excuse me. You're like, damn, is he talking? No, I don't think he's tripping off me. Next thing you know, he starts talking about how they're going to rehearse and this is what they're going to do. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, this the shit. So I really record now. And then as they finish in there saying, how this go, how this go, Cube turns to me and he's like, so this is when you come out. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Then he starts explaining what I'm going to do, what he'll do. And I'm like, whoa. He says, so Yella, you got the cue for him. He knows what cue is. He's like, yeah, yeah, he does. You know, he, he knows how to do this. He's like, he calls me son. He's like, yeah, my son knows how to do this. So as he as Cube is walking away, he turns around and say, oh, happy birthday, nigga. <laughs> I'm like, oh, bro, that's 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 love, homie. That's love. And then turned around and paid me to do it, too, bro. He gave me gave me a check as well, bro. So I was like, oh, that was a birthday gift 
of birthday gifts, bro. I'll never forget that. I appreciate that from Cube, man. I appreciate that, Cube, all the way. You don't know that that that, that was something special in my heart, you know what I mean? That'll forever be placed there, you know what I mean? Yeah, and man. Yeah, that's bro. pretty dope. It was man. me, it was the, the group, Game, Kendrick, you know what I mean? And Drake came and did his thing, you know what I mean? And we did Coachella, bro. It was the most people I ever seen in my life. And best birth one of the best birthday gifts I ever had, bro. Man, that's dope. Yeah, real talk, real that's, talk. That's dope that you have these relationships with them. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, they look out for you. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's, that's really, uh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. That's good shit, man. Real talk, bro. You know, do they ever tell you? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm your dad? yeah, the one that I'm around the most, DJ Yella, you know, my, my, it's like my godfather, man, you know what I mean? Uh, call him Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> but it's, Yella, Yella's always been family, always been there, and yeah, me and him would just, We'll go eat. You know, one day we went and go eat. We were on a tour, and our off day was the day my father passed away. And me and him just chilled that day. And, you know, he'll just reminisce and talk to me about stuff. And, and I'm like, well, yeah, did, did you dawn on what today is? Look how, look how God made that happen. You know what I mean? Of all days, our off day was this day. He's like, wow, you know, Yellow's really in the truth. Uh, and um, and to God uh, and the truth. So, uh, yeah, he takes heed of that. Like, you know, God just aligned it this way. You feel what I mean? And, uh. And he's very, very positive, always been a good, a great influence, even a 110% great influence now, just the transition he took as a man. And, uh, you know, he checks up on my children, you know what I mean? Uh, checks up on me, keeps me on the road, keeps me busy when he can. And uh, But his stories will take you, his stories will have you tear up down there, like, because he'll tell you some stuff like, man, and it'll be like, whoa, like, me being on the road with you, and then this is something that I was on the road with your dad, and look at it, it's a similarity. You know, I mean, or you did the same thing, you know, or I had to do this. So it's, it's some good ones, some good stories that I, I will not share because I'm sure Yella don't want to talk about them in, in his days of living now. But the raunchy good stories and the beautiful stories. But he's he's always reminding me when I'm on the road, you know, of what we do the same. Always late, always doing this, chasing this girl, doing this. <laughs> you know, he's, matter of fact, he's like, you guys like the sim similarities of girls. Sometimes it used to be like. Your daddy would like that one. I'm like, damn, Jenna, how you know? I got a number already. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad inspired a lot of people. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. um, I mean, I mean, you know, from just from the gangster rap and, you know, mm -hmm. w what it did, mm -hmm. you know, f that's still going. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the surprising things I've seen, I'm not sure if you've seen, but he inspired Eminem to wear Jordans. Wow, because from, from the album cover. From the album yeah, cover. Uh -huh. um, you know, Eminem, seen him, you know, that young and just loved it from there, man. And was just, That's you real. Know, super inspired That's by That's real, it. yeah. I remember that story, yeah. You know, also, your dad was the first to sign Mexican rappers. Yeah, uh-huh, very much. Kid Frost. Yes, sir, yeah. OG. Uh, Toker. Brownside. Yeah, Toker. Toker. Piece. Yes, sir, my OG, yes. Can you Both talk about that a lot? Uh, yeah, well, it's that, and I'm gonna go back to the re in the beginning when I told you the Disneyland story. <laughs> I remember, man, <laughs> we went to Disney, man, Disneyland with Toker. Oh my goodness, man, that was the first Sureño that I got a bar of. Like I just understood, like whoa, what they really was at a young age, bro. I was young, and this motherfucker was ready to tie Mickey up and and our shooting. You feel what I'm saying? Like, but Toker was just a gangster of gangster. And I was young as I don't know what. Like, oh, do you listen to the crazy stuff this man? He sound like the people in the movies. Like, what? He like he tripping because Mickey taking too long. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, ah, oh, Toker is on one. But Toker's been in. The, Toker's been around, bro, since I was. Oh, bro, you got to think. Damn near over. You got to think thirty years, bro. You know what I mean? Of course, you know him. Rest in peace. But you know, from in my lifetime, I've been knowing Toker for thirty years, bro. So you guys were friends the whole time. I mean, he was my father's artist, so we knew of him. He was he was Uncle Toker, you know what I'm saying? He was, you know, just, you know, just the G in, G, G in the family, the Mexican G in the family. But Kid Frost goes way back, bro. So, you know, between him and his son, bro, you know what I mean? Them has been family all the way. So, you know, Kid Frost goes back, back, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, for a lot, you know what I mean? This is, <laughs> this is for a lot, so, you know what I mean? He, he, he held it down for the hood. Julio G, it's like Tony G. It goes back to all the, the OG, you know, Hispanics that you know pops was was family with they're straight up and one friends as family you feel what I'm saying and um so you got to think they've been in my life since I was a kid yeah since I was a kid. is there any stories you could share with Frost or Toker uh well Toker was that one just Toker more want to tie Mickey Mouse up at at, at my fucking uh 
at Disneyland because he was taking too long, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and his frost has always just been supportive, man, you know what I mean? It wasn't too many significant out-the-box stories that I just sit well. It was just they just been around, bro, family, you feel what I mean? And just respect, you know what I mean? And uh, it's a blessing for me and, and Kid Frost's kid, son to grow up and, and work and, and, and know each other as well. Oh, you work with Scoop? Scoop, yeah, that's my partner. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, that's my I partner. I interviewed him, man, like years ago when he when he first came out. That's man, right. Like a quick little five-minute interview. Yeah, that's real, brother. So that's just a blessing of that, how we first circle, you know, me and Scoop to, to come up and, 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 and you know, you know, grew up with each other and Kid Frost to sit here and be originally with Pops as love. Yeah, he he was a kid in his in uh in his dad's videos. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, he's younger than me, and like I say, Toker's Toker's always been around. You know, what I mean, Toker could take care of the family up until his passing. Uh, stayed in communication with my sister Erica, brought her to to Mexico. You know, what I mean, let him stay in her house, stay at his house. You know, with my fam, with with my other family, my Ditchin family, and just showed them love, bro. And uh, and we, you know, she we still in connection with his wife and and, and kids now. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Toker always spoke really highly. Yeah. Of yeah, your dad. Yeah, yeah. Every time I seen him on live or I'd catch a video or something, it yeah, was always, you know. Yeah. That's indeed. You know, he always had a lot of love for him. That's right. Yeah. I think you touched on this a little bit earlier, but uh, your sister was mad about not being able to sample your dad's songs. Uh, yeah. When the, with, with the Megan Thee Stallion. It wasn't a fact that she wasn't able to sample it. It's just the sampling was given to somebody who had a more, you know, a more. A, a more audience, you feel what I'm saying? It makes sense. Megan Stallion's the biggest, one of the, if not the biggest female rapper right now. So, you know what I mean? It makes sense to sit here and, and grab her audience to sit here and give some homage to where it started at. It's love. Appreciate it. You know what I mean? My sister, it wasn't the fact that you were not able to do it. You know what I mean? You just mad that the, a lady in your genre is doing it. But it is what it is. It, I think they were just... Wasn't thinking at the time and not looking at it as far as it was the respect that was given. I see somewhere in an interview people said that it was hard for NWA to film videos in Compton because of the drama back in the days. Um, Is not there any truth to that? Not to my knowledge. Um, a lot of them were done in the outskirt of it. Maybe more just more places where you could get permits to do it. You feel what I'm saying? Back in them days. And, and it probably would just, you know... It would have been more controlled doing it out, but you know it wasn't no necessary as far as it is. Probably, probably a lot of the homies and a lot of people gonna be there, and it's like you gotta deal with a whole lot. Everybody being from Compton is like you know, there's just a lot of different stuff you gotta go through at that time and days. You know, it's not like these new age kids keep going to their hood and making all these videos, got all their homies there. Back in the days, NWA was probably going he probably had too much police control. You know, what I mean, NWA come do a video at Compton, so it was just maybe so as far as in just the control. Just making sure everything was gonna yeah. run smooth. Smooth, yeah. You ain't gonna ain't gonna be smooth when you got everybody you grew up with, cousins, everything here, whoop whoop, and the whole city coming out, and, and now here comes police tripping on what you're doing. Here's more permits you gotta get, all kind of this other stuff. So videos are just done in the fashion of what it's supposed to do: get work done and go. You see, he filmed Compton City G's in Compton. Right, right. You touched on this earlier that uh, when you and Game had had the issue back in. The beginning stages of my career. The beginning stages of your uh -huh. career. Uh -huh. what, what was all that about? Just young. I was just young and retarded. Uh, I think that uh, was a comment that was made on some music business that I felt came from him, but it didn't come from him. It came from his management, which in turn wasn't his management and too long after that. So I believe like he didn't possibly know what was going on or what was said in a disrespectful manner. And uh, I kind of just took it on heed and, and ran with it. Uh, we but we friend, you know good friends now you know what I mean he was he was helpful in my um, my last single I put out it ain't over you know what I mean uh, with production on that so yeah we we yeah that's my dog you feel what I'm saying we straight it was just just a young course at a time going through you know what I mean it's just having having attitude and ego on my shoulder and chip on my shoulder how'd you guys end up squashing it um, we sat down it got kind of got a little a little far we sat down after having a few run-ins with each other in public uh, and we finally sat down and kind of hash some things out and kind of got off the chest as far as and you know what I mean uh, what it shouldn't be I think you got individuals who work for him that's family of mine you feel what I'm saying it's just stupid you know what I mean Compton's that small so you know what I mean it's, it's it's more about building each other up as brothers and instead of sitting here and ignorantly want to sit here and quarrel with each other for nothing especially when we natives yeah man um, I, I think it was you know 
when he came out, uh, you know, I think he wanted to call his first album NWA. He was real. Yeah, and it was just, you know, having that chip, like, you know, somebody's trying to get in the zone of doing that. So I said, I understood my sisters in their their immaturity to feeling like that because I, I, I had run-ins like that. You know, mine was a game, you know what I mean? You want to come in NWA chain, easy on your arm, you know what I mean? Claim and, and, and name drop that people think you're easy son and... When I'm here, you know, as a young individual, it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> like I'm really from the city. Like I pop up anywhere and we'll do anywhere, go and do what we got to do. But I mean, like, like he came over to my area and he knows that, you know, how official it was and, and the love and support it was. It was just the wrong angle of information that I got that I felt didn't come from him. And I kind of ran with it on some uh, music, some just, you know, record deal type stuff. And um, I feel like I just was a wrong, I was wrong in that part as a man because I don't think that he really knew it. And I don't think that he had that in his heart to even have that disrespect towards me at that time. He was like, it was open arms as a little brother. So it's just, you know, some maturity you gotta do as you come up in life. But glad that nobody got, you know, hurt from it. No, no, you know, mishaps behind it. So it is what it is. Yeah, I remember on his on the documentary with the, the DVD, uh -huh, he, yeah. com he comes, comes over today, yeah, to the, the house uh -huh. and, you know, where NWA yeah, was made. Yeah, so the respect was there, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, me taking something and not having a, a direct dialogue with him instead of having it with his managers, which was Jimmy Henchman at the time, you know what I mean? So I felt like they just kind of steered, it threw out wrong information, or wrong information probably got related to me, which is the stupid things that happen when we're kids. You know, one person says something, you get back to you, you know, it could be a whole total different thing, and I'm just going to take it out on the individual I felt it came from. How often do people want to see the room where uh, you guys did all oh, that? Oh, my goodness. Man. Oh, bro, every every day, you know, every single day. Out the country, in the country, everywhere. I bet. I yeah. bet you probably all the time people want to go, let, let me see the house. For real, bro. I'll be standing outside and they'll just pop up, you know, I'm like, oh. and we done pull guns out on people and everything. Gonna lay them down and everything. And you're like, we're from, you know, you hear the accent. Once you hear the accent, we're like, no, they, they, they really, you know what I mean? Like, who the fuck? Like, well, don't roll by in a car slowing down. This is Compton yeah, still. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where, where, where we look like an object being pulled up. It's a fucking big old camera. You feel what I'm saying? I'm finna get ready to just step to the side. Just let this clip out. You feel what I'm saying? And, you know, and then sometimes it's like, you don't, you know, we don't want to play on innocent bystander stuff. We didn't just pull it out and made them roll the window down and stop them and block them off. And be like, what is you doing? Like, what was y'all? You know, like, oh, don't know. We... You know, we from, we respect the legacy we come from, we do. Sometimes we've seen people take pictures and pa and post it, EZ's house, and then be like three or four o'clock in the morning. Like, we'd be laughing like, you better be happy we didn't walk outside. <laughs> we was right in the backyard. <laughs> you know, he in the front like, Ch -ch -ch. you know what I mean? So it's all kind of crazy stuff, bro. But yeah, a lot of fans know they didn't got guns pulled out on them, laid down. Some females know they didn't jumped out, like 10 deep females from Detroit or somewhere, and chill, smoke with us, hang out, all want to just see it. So you get all kind of stuff like that. It's publicly known on the internet what the address is. So individuals will pop up. And your family still owns, owns it? Very much, very much. I still own it, yeah. You still own it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, so with you... my grandmother, yep. Oh, my okay. grandmother's still living, still healthy and well. You know, I praise to God. So yeah, we definitely still own it. That's what's up. Yeah. So you guys, I'm sure it's kind of like a, a landmark now at this yeah point. that's what we're trying to get to you know what i mean making it as a city it's in monumental city landmark um possibly have it where individuals can just go ahead and come and get a whole tour of it you know what i mean come and really pull up on a, on a professional way see some old archives possibly buy some merchandise but soon soon we'll have it for you guys that would be cool yeah you know i think a, a lot of fans think your dad is a raiders fan yeah yeah can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, he's not a Raiders fan. Uh, he uh, He's exactly the same fan I am, a 49er fan. So you ask us that, like, oh, no way, E. How do you think I became a 49er fan? You know what I mean? Like, And we weren't wearing red in Compton, you feel what I'm saying? And we weren't wearing none of that. I just, it's like when people ask me, I'm like, hey, I just only grew off of what my daddy bought me and, and brought to me, you know what I mean? So I significantly have a lot of that, you know, merchandise that he got for me when I was a kid, when he was alive. So, you know what I mean? And then... One day I just had a story with my with with, with his, his first bodyguard, Big Man, rest in peace. And Big Man was like, man, your daddy was a Raider fan. He's like, let me tell you a story, man. Your daddy used to sit here and joke around and tell people, Eric Wright, I want to say number 24 from the 1980-84 Super Bowl of 49ers. His name was Eric Wright. He was a cornerback. 
he used to put NWA on his on his on his on his on his, on his gloves. So he's always questioning and ask, Are you and Easy related? So, you know, he was fond of it. You know, he, he knew statistics, he knew players. It was the time and leave something on your guys' head and uh, 1995 year Super Bowl against the San Diego Chargers. We won. I was with him that weekend and we watched it together. You know what I mean? It was the last game I watched the Super Bowl. We won it too. <laughs> yeah. And he passed away the next March. Wow. Yeah. So he just wore the Raider stuff for fashion? Yeah, he's black, all black. It was the model, you know what I mean? Dressing all black. Because Raiders was, you know, yeah, popular back then. Very much. Well, so he how made did, them you know, popular. He did, did, they made them popular. And then, you know, even when they wasn't winning. But, you know, once Al Davis wasn't finna push with the, you know, give him some kind of compensation to, to getting that merchandise overly sold throughout the world, you got people that wasn't from L.A. wearing rate all black Raiders because of the N.W.A. and my father. You feel what I'm saying? So... You know, once it went, went to, you know, OG Al Davis, you know, didn't see I with helping them out on that or doing that for them. It was White Sox hat, L.A. hat, Compton hat. So your dad had a conversation with Al Davis? I believe at the time, maybe Jerry, you know what I mean? But it was an understanding that they were trying to go get, you know what I mean, some kind of funding from them for, you know, kind of ambassador to ship the, the Raiders black, all black hat, and jacket, everything. What was your relationship like with Jerry? Did you guys ever talk or anything? Yeah, we've ever, 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 ever. I've been, I've seen and known Jerry since we were younger. Because uh, he had a lot, you know, I, I don't, you know, him and his dad, I, I mean, him and your dad had, had the a falling great, out. Go, yeah, they had a, a know, major falling out. He always spoke highly of your dad. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, he, they, they hand in handly did a duty of growth in, in life and, and, and fame and wealth with each other. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for Jerry... NWA, my father wouldn't be what they were. If it wasn't for my father, Jerry wouldn't be what it was. You know what I mean? So it was a relationship in one until it went bad. You know what I mean? Until, you know, you catch people in their hands in a cookie jar. And that was detrimental, you feel what I'm saying? And because of the fact of it was, you know, no need for that. You feel what I mean? You're teaching me how to, to be and how, you know, put me in position to be the owner and this, that, and the other. And it's like, hey, I'm going to teach you all this. And then turn around. When you turn around, I'm in your back pocket. And then when you turn around and look at me, I'm, I'm asking for my percentage. You know what I mean? So that's just like disrespect on disrespect. Yeah, I think I've seen a, D a Vlad interview recently where uh, Yellow was talking about that, uh, you know, he would get, um, he was like double dipping. You know, he would get paid from here, then he would get paid to be, you know, he could pay for the record label, then he'd also get paid to be everybody's manager. And it was like, you know, that stuff's, you're not, you're not supposed to do that stuff. Yeah, outside of that, it was a lot of, in-house personal more so than in your face double dipping it was like like i say behind your back double dipping then come in your face and ask for my regular percentage so mm. that was just hurtful for my father you know what i mean and you know you know that that was detrimental not to make him cry but to make a man you know you know when you're paying you 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 it's like you go into the plug and you, you know you you dip it in on my expense and then i get back and they say i owe five to ten million dollars you know why? Because it's got authorized. Like how? Well, you know. So. Yeah, you know we hear a lot of sad or falling outs in the music industry, man. It's uh. Yeah. You know, it seems like there's kind of like no control or no, you know, everybody. You know, a lot. It just seems like a lot of bad things happen in the music industry, man. It's kind of seems like it's been part of the business. Have you ever talked to Dre or anybody about your dad's falling out? Um, no, I've talked to Drake plenty of times, but never really sat down about their fallout. You know what I mean? Never really did. That's 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 different. Maybe that'll be a bucket list coming going forward, but nah, I just never really brought that up with, with them. It seems like it always is a cool situation to sit here and throw in a vibe of that. As I was a kid, it was more, you know, being younger, it was more so the um, just astonishing of being around, you know, maybe thinking that a man will sit here and when I had that conversation with you, so as a kid, a young 20-year-old, you didn't think to really, really bring it up, but open to the conversation. And as I got older, it was like, you know, by that time, it was, you know, not too much of a, a thought process to want to bring up, you know what I mean? And it didn't mean as much as you got older. It was like, you know, friends fall out. It, yeah. it seems like, I mean, well, I believe I've seen an interview where Cube talks about how they kind of squash things and... You know, your dad and Dre actually had a, had kind of had a phone call, and yeah, you know they were talking about getting a group together, but it was yeah. just yeah, you know, kind of doing things. But as to why, you know, what I mean, and it's it's hard for anybody to think of 
maybe negative things that you did in your life that you weren't happy or okay with and it has a bad outturn so it's like always as you know when i was younger it's like you know i don't want to be that thorn they don't want to bring me around because this kid's gonna ask me questions and you know what i mean it was more so it's like hey you know let's see see what type of love that they got still you feel what i'm saying like but if i go in there with this spearhead you know what i mean bringing up something they they kind of sensitive to you know what i mean it, it, it just business is funny you feel what i'm saying it's a lot of individuals that could tell you they real and, and it's not you know what i mean and not to speak and saying i'm directing this is pointing this at Dre is just you just figured that out and learn that as you get older you know what I mean and a person could say hey I'm 100% real a real homies a knuckle it up and sit down and have a beer or if I'm wrong and you're wrong they just sit down and talk about it but if you get upset about it you're hiding and all that that speaks volumes to that individual's character you feel what I'm saying I learned that at a, at a young age you feel what I'm saying like hey you know we got problems talk about it and we that's how we grew up with a lot of our friends we gonna have a problem and hey we mad we gonna fight we do we gonna get up the next morning it's like hey you gonna see my bike in your front yard. Like, what's happening? You coming outside? You feel what I'm saying? It's like, that's just how I was raised from my city. You expect in this industry, everybody raps about being real. You know what I mean? Everybody raps about being this thorough. You know what I mean? But it's like, no, it's not. You know what I mean? You hit an individual up. Hey, you know, you just want to come rod, you know, see what's going on. You claim you, you just this. You got so much respect for this. And then it's like, everybody's just on their their weird tip i don't want to feel weird around this person i got an ego i don't want this person talking down to me or asking me questions i feel like i'm going to be embarrassed at or this that and the other so this is what this industry is this is a, this is a lot of so-called you feel what i mean so and going back to the question is i just didn't want to sit here and i always thought everybody was not as real as they said in this business so i didn't want to come around dre and again not to sit there and say hey dre's one of them individuals i'm talking about but to each his own take it where shoe fits is when you're around somebody and you bring up something that's 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 sensitive they get to the point where all right well cool everybody already knows it's not hard to get to dre so now it's like, all right, cool. Then, you know, I just really don't want to be around that kid. Keep the kid away from me, you know, type shit. You know what I mean? So as a kid, as younger, I already knew a lot of people wasn't as thorough like that. So I'm not going to do something where a person looks at like, ah, well, let him, you know, I don't know about letting him in, you know, or, you know, you know, let him come around that much. You know, he's bringing up stuff that makes me feel, you know, what I mean, just, you know, weird or asking me questions. I didn't have a vibe to who knows. I had a real sit down with Q, you know, what I mean, where I told him a lot of heart to heart, like, you know what I mean? Even even after the, the the NWA movie, like, I don't got no ill feelings about nothing because you guys are doing this. You know what I mean? I'm a real dude. You feel what I'm saying? I don't I don't have no ego, bro. You feel what I'm saying? I don't get like that. So everybody could take that information and that truth on, on, on how they are, you know? If they don't sit here and, and feel like they want to come around or come around or bring up certain stories or anything like that because of their impersonal feelings, I don't want to sit here and make them, you know what I mean, have to live with that you know what i mean when you come around a little easy like shit motherfucker making me feel or question it you know what i mean because i can easily sit there and say hey dre yeah you fucked up and like you i, I really want to know why would you do that to go to another fucked up situation you know what i mean you was with the stuff that created you i used to live with grandma i used to be over there all the time then you go over to this nigga should and this nigga's you know shooting you and you know forcing you to do shit and, and you run and then you left everything behind why do that what was the point of going to those situations so i you look at it like, hey, you probably bring up a a, a, a can of, of worms that a person did not want to remember they swallowed. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I don't knock you. You feel what I'm saying? For not wanting to talk about that. If you ever did, hey, but I just don't want to be that individual where, you know, when I was younger coming around and I make them feel that way. Now, if you ask me that now, the next sit down I have with them, it'll be a lot of things I want to get off my chest because life's short. So, hey, let's go ahead and get these off. You know, you could have been gone not too long ago. You know what I mean? Never get this opportunity. God, is all blessings and praises to God that you okay. So oh, yeah, next, you had some health issues. Yeah, so next time we sit down, I, I will actually sit here and say, hey, you know what? I figured we could just have a drink, man, a smoke, and let's go back down memory lane one time. You know, so I would, you know what I mean? Now. I would have loved to see them get back together. Oh, man. Yeah, you know? Yeah. That would have been classic, you know, yeah. NWA. So, you know the beef and then coming back together and working and yeah you know that, yeah. that would have definitely been dope man. real talk bro um, oh snoop mm -hmm. uh can you talk to me about snoop coming to compton and trying to get signed with your dad oh what back in the days that yeah. was that was that was normal you know of course snoop grew up you know what he's going to grow up to he's right there next to the city you know what i mean 
um, Compton and Long Beach is his neighbors, you know what I mean? So, of course, him going through his transition, that was the first thing he do is just, you know, NWA was NWA at the time. And, you know, <laughs> you know, let's just, of course, and it's easy for you guys to understand, Warren is his best friend. Warren's brothers with, with, uh, with uh, Dre, you, would, you would already kind of understand of where, you know, the introduction kept getting to, you know what I mean? I just, you know, wish that, you know, I myself wish that my father would have probably had more hands on knowing and grabbing that and signing Snoop because that would have been hard, you know what I mean? But he went where he went. Success is where success, you know what I mean? My only thing is I just know his heart when he came in the rap game of what he looked up to, you feel what I'm saying? And then where he had to transition to, you know, your first couple of records was dissing, you know what I'm saying? But Snoop was hard, you know what I mean? I'm a big fan of a Snoop despite what it was and as you get older you understand the truth of what what things were and it's just how it was man it's just a fucked up situation I would have loved to hear your dad and Snoop oh, they would have sounded good on the track oh my god that would have been what that would have been supreme when I sat down with Money B recently he told me a story about um, Tupac and your dad and I believe above the law were in an elevator uh -huh. and I believe they were going to a show and it ran into death row. Guns were pulled out, and it got got a little wild, but everything was cool. Yeah, it was some shit. We was in the elevator, and then uh, I think it was Warren G or somebody, but him and Easy had some words. But we were we were with Above the Law, getting ready to go perform the song we did with him, and then it was like some some words back and forth, and Cats was about to pull out guns and shit, but you know. You're saying that Tupac was kind of getting a little too involved or close to it? Yeah, in my opinion, he was getting acting a little bit too close to, you know, just because two cats are fighting, if you don't know what's happening and you know all of the people, you know, I didn't think we had any business trying to get involved. Do you hear stories about that, about your dad a lot? Not no situation where he had to pull it on no gun out or, or being in any type of fear, but I do know that story when above the law was with with Cube and I mean not with Cube with uh, Tupac and my father. You know what I mean? Uh, the introduction, first and foremost, I think started with Tretch, who worked with my father from Naughty by Nature, and I, I don't I want to say Tretch made the introduction, maybe not, maybe it was Digital Underground. Money B might know more though from that night, but above the law did do a record with uh with 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 uh, Money B and, and Tupac. And my father and Rim was in that video. You know what I mean? So I, I'm not sure if he's talking about that night, but that that's that's yeah, that that that's true. They were all together at that video shoot. Not knowing who they ran into, I never heard that one. You know what I mean? But of course, yeah, my father and, and Tupac definitely met each other. Yeah, man, that would have been dope too. Oh, man. Pop, yeah, you know, but I, hey, what you they know? say, devil's advocate always can mess up some good stuff, huh? You know, what do you think your dad would be doing? If he was still alive. Uh, oh my goodness, man. Just put it this way. He was doing speakers. He had been doing headphones. He was already doing the lowrider game where you could sit here and possibly go and 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 and, and do lowriders and people could run up and jack them or take them and you could do stuff. What game does that sound like? Grand Theft Auto. Mm. So you gotta think in 1993, 94, these ideas was already there. He was in the movies. He brought the Hughes brothers who did Minister Society out here. Showed them Compton, showed them Watts, showed them around. They do a movie called Men's in Society. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he ownership of a, the, one of the biggest movies, Boys in the Hood. He did a script himself. So Cube said this one time on an interview. My father was like Yoda. Knew, just knew stuff before the time of it going. And then here we go now in this generation. And you tell me how big are the headphones? Oh yeah, huge. How bigger DVDs, video games, in that nature, that type of video game, grand, it turned into Grand Theft Auto. You feel what I'm saying? Movies. I mean, rappers transition to doing movies. You know, executive producers. Biggest thing that he was going, it was he's buying a, a a warehouse all through Compton. It was going to be a distribution company. Mm. So, this is '93, '94. So you just put a mind's a man's mind cap and saying, hey, he's doing all this before we really had internet. We had computers that were up to Waha. I mean, there no laptops, no social media, none of that like down there. So you're talking about a man who was doing things of a thought process back in the early 90s that just got taken away too fast. So imagine what he would have been doing, or you know what I mean? Business-wise, huge. Oh, my goodness, yeah. You know? He would have been the first hip-hop billionaire. Very much. There you go. That's a commercial point. There you go. 
There you go, because he owned it already. Wasn't going somewhere to try to own it, to make it. Do he owned it already and was going in his vision. Boom, Thugs and Harmony's coming out. He signed Will I Am. Look how big, you know what I mean, these individuals he had in his passing. You feel what I'm saying? So, he was, what we've been doing? Oh, my goodness. Sky's the limit. It's been wild, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Well, so what do you got coming up? You, um, I believe you were telling me you had a, a record label. Yeah, uh -huh, Rich and Ruthless. Uh -huh. That was one of my artists. She's actually here in the studio with us, Latoya Lane. She's from the Bay Area. I got my brother, Baby Easy. I got uh, Kiki Smooth, Hispanic rapper, from, first Mexican rapper out of Compton. I got um, my homeboy, Compton Musa. So those are my, my, my core base of uh, artists. Um, um, myself, you know, I'm on Grown Up Hip Hop. So we just, we're getting ready to green light another season of that. Uh, next month so doing that and just focusing on getting my ep out while working on my artist ep the first one i'm going to put out is my artist latoya lane the first female uh, on our label uh, and then she's a good writer so she's helping creativity on my uh, project as well titled yellow brick road to compton and um man just doing that i got a medical marijuana uh, brand that i've been doing for the last three years called rich and ruthless cannabis which is the evolution of hip-hop and marijuana you know we go hand in hand so uh you know, just, just, you know, trying to stay busy in, a, in entrepreneurship and continues in this legacy any way that I possibly can. You know, we've been doing merchandise uh, that everybody can follow what I'm on on littleeasy.com, real simple, littleeasy.com, and uh, really find everything there that, that, that we have going on that I can continue to keep in this legacy going. Man, that's what's up, man. Yeah, I, I'm excited to hear it. Appreciate it. Hear the music, Appreciate man, it, brother. You got coming up, man. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you, know? you. Appreciate your time, bro. This was lovely. Yeah, man. I, I yeah, I appreciate That's you real, also, bro. man. That's real. This was dope, man. We had a dope conversation. For sure, for sure. Yes, bro. Dope stories, man. You know, I, I know the fans are gonna love it. Oh yeah, most definitely, you most know? definitely, most definitely, brother. It was a pleasure, brother. For Me sure, too, for man. sure. That was real.